eventually welterweight division is getting crowded like yeah, a lot of yeah. fighters there we have Errol Spence one of the guys that a lot of people duck in it and sometimes I say I don't know what it is that they don't step up against Errol Spence we gotta also let's not forget give prompts to Mikey Garcia Mikey Garcia went and fall against Errol Spence what do you think of his performance of of that that he went against Errol Spence I really love Mikey Mikey represents everything that boxing should stand for. Fear, you're fearless. You know, he's got big balls because the man is sitting here taking hey. on any and everyone. He's hey. trying to achieve greatness. You have to respect somebody like that. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Especially in a time and an era where boxers are picking and choosing who they want and how long they want to make someone wait. That shouldn't be up to a fighter. That should be up to the organization. It should be champion facing champion. There should realistically be one champion, realistically. And I, I think that's sort of what turns people off. Like you always hear casuals say, oh, I don't watch boxing, it's fixed. I don't watch boxing because of this or that. It's sad that that's what people are saying because you can't, you almost can't disagree with them sometimes. Sometimes you, you're they're like, oh, okay. I mean, you know, they are, they are acting like that. But I don't know. I, I respect Mikey Garcia a lot. Um, I'd love to see him fight Vasil Lomachenko. Oh, that a, would big, be a, great, yeah, a that bigger would be a great moment, fight. a bigger fight. Mm -hmm. Eventually, Teofimo has been calling yeah. out uh, Loma. Mm -hmm. So we don't know if it really is going to happen mm -hmm. for the 2020. And I would say we just got to stay tuned. And Teofim keep is in a great position right now, and I told him that today. I said, look, at the end of the day, you're promoting yourself and you're doing it well. The fact that you're available, you're putting yourself in front of cameras, you're constantly... Um, I wouldn't say he's talking about Vasil. I think people are bringing up Vasil's name because there seems to be this tension between them. And I, I think, you know, everyone loves a good rivalry in boxing. So I, I love what storyline is you know creating at this point between the two of them because next year the year after when we do see the fight it's going to be a fight that we've been talking about for a while now so um i love his confidence and i love how without a single doubt in his mind he really believes that he has Vasil's number you know what i mean i mean we already know Vasil's lost once but you get what i'm saying like yeah. he's been on a winning streak ever since so um I'm again, you know, I have nothing but respect for Tio Fimo, and I and I told him today, just keep doing what you're doing, keep doing what you're doing, because you need to put yourself out there. That's what a lot of fighters lack these days. They mm -hmm. tend to rely on a, a, a press release being sent out or one or two interviews at the network. But at the end of the day, especially in the era of YouTube, you really do have to constantly put yourself in front of the cameras that are, you know, millions of people, mm -hmm. you know, are two or, or millions of people can see your face. So, um, bright kid, good head on his shoulders, and, but yeah, he's, he's got that edge, and I really like that about him. I definitely I agree with you. He's looking also for greatness. Yeah. He says that he won't dog nobody in order yeah. to, make, to make great fights, and we we'll just got to see yeah. what it comes also with the money, promoters. Uh, hopefully, this fight happens, like you said it. Um, but sometimes it's sad that you know people talk about like boxing that they don't really they say oh it's fixed and I believe it's not fixed because sometimes we see we just saw Mikey Garcia. I can't stance. say that I don't believe it's fixed. I can say there's been some fishy moments, some fishy times where you're <laughs> like, well, what the hell are you watching? I think that in order to avoid people believing that boxing's fixed, that we need to change the way, you know, the way that judges are let off the hook when calling you know, an entire fight completely wrong. I believe a judge should, let's say there's a controversial, you know, you know like, like there's been numerous of them. I mean, let's take Adelaide Bird, for example, mm -hmm. right? What the hell was she watching? So she should have been sat in a chair on camera mm -hmm. in front of three or four other judges, judges. or some, you know, and explain while watching each round, explain why you gave that round away. I can promise you if that's the repercussion that judges have every time they do some bullshit like that, sorry, I'm gonna cuss, then that's, then that's, I, I feel like they would think twice about doing something like that. I think it would make it more difficult because to assume that bribes don't exist 
would be just a bit naive, wouldn't it be? I agree with you. It's part of sometimes like, you know, certain moments that happen like that. Like, let's put an example, right? Triple G Canelo. I believe that Triple G won the first one, but somehow they made it look like a draw and second yeah. fight. It could be either way. It could have been either way, yeah. But, you know, over here, I think both of them, they gave us 24 rounds. Excellent. I don't take nothing away from none of them. But judges, sometimes over here is the problem. Yeah. So I agree with your message yeah. in order that something has to be fixed. In something has to be done. And I feel done. like everyone's talking about it, but nobody's actually doing anything about it. Hopefully, like you, you know. Like, hear, you hear other people who are very important and powerful figures in boxing. You don't see them budging. Hmm. It's true. I definitely, you know, we have. So, to... are you really trying to fix the problem, mm, or are you part of the problem? That's a good question, and we should just, you know, keep it going and mm -hmm. and continue, you know, pushing on, you know, all these people that actually they are in front of us, and hopefully this thing don't happen in boxing, because, like you said, it sometimes it makes look a little bit bad decisions like that, and and it does really affect, you know, the fighters, because hey. At the end of the day, you know, yeah, sometimes I mean, they, it's their livelihood. Psychologically, winning, winning a world title puts them in a better monetary position in life. They can make more money from sponsors. Um, what is it? Uh, like branding deals. It puts them in a position to make more money on their next fight, so long as they continue to win and, and, and have the belt. You're taking, you're robbing people. And you got to count on all the years that they've spent investing into this moment. And you're taking that away from them. Because you can. Because you can. A judge can go in that night already with their mind made up. Mm. And get away with it. Take a bit of slack on social media. They'll be the topic of conversation for the first month or so. Mm. And then it goes away. Wow. It's very sad to... But it's the truth. It is the truth. I agree it's the with truth. you. So... It's really unfortunate, and something has to give. I mean, I talk about it, but there's only so much I can do. The people who are able to do something aren't doing anything about it. Because again, if they were, they'd be doing something about it. Nothing's I... getting done. So just like what Freddie Roach and I were talking about today, Freddie Roach was saying, if there was a lifetime ban for the first time you mm. failed the drug test, nobody would be doing Nobody will be taking drugs. Exactly. I... Ain't nobody going to risk a lifetime ban from the sport that they've invested, you know, pretty much their child, entire childhood into. Unless you're one of those lucky, fortunate ones who hmm. just randomly turned pro and you were just naturally good. But for the most part, these are things that people have been investing in families, their parents. There's much investment amongst everybody around the fighter. So to put all of that up at risk of getting caught, I can promise you that would not be something that's crossing anybody's mind. Mm -hmm. But they're doing it and they're getting away with it because drug testing isn't even mandatory for every fight, which is absolutely insane. It's, it's something but it's that... so expensive. Oof. People don't want to pay that much money unless they're in a power position where they're multi-millionaires and paying that, right, they want to, they want to make sure they're not fighting against cheats but what about all the other guys up and coming they're fighting against guys losing taking L's hmm. knockouts blows to the head against guys who are who are who are doping that's something really I would say sad because it, it has to be done it has to be fixed by the people that we have in front of you know, us and we just you know I'm trying not going you know, in a different way but we just saw a Great example in mm -hmm. MMA that I think it's called this fighter TJ and um, I can't remember exactly his name, but they gave him they gave him two years, you know, in order that he won't fight. Sorry. Okay. I think TJ, uh, one of the MMA fighters, yeah, uh, they gave him two years. So, mm -hmm. do you think that the other the rest of the fighters they're gonna you know? probably cheat I don't think so it's already an example well, here's, so. what's, here's what's so strange is you get fighters who who fail drug tests and they get six months hmm. and then you get fighters who what is his name Carlos Molina 
the heavyweight. Mm. Took a two year ban because he took a vitamin B12 shot. Wow. And there was a substance in the vitamin B12 shot. Mm. What was found apparently in his system wasn't actually, doesn't really, he doesn't gain anything from it. However, he took two year ban off of that. Why? Because he's not necessarily the big name, the one selling out, you know, venues. So it's a money, it's a money thing. Oh, well, he can't make us anything, so we'll, we'll ban him. We'll give him the appropriate time. But the guys who got money, they're letting him off the hook. Yes. What message does that send if, if you're picking and choosing who you actually want to punish? Hmm. Giving someone six months is like giving them an extended holiday. <laughs> Because I think that's nothing in compare, you know, like I'm two go years. I'm going to travel the world and I'll be back. And I'll be back, eh? Very My sad. My fight's already set up. Very sad, very sad. So, and... I mean, it is what it is. It's, it's, again, you don't hear enough people talking about it. It's a dangerous sport. You can kill somebody. I think, unfortunately, I hate to say this, but I'm sure my words at some point are going to come back and, and, and haunt me on this, but it's the truth. It's going to take somebody dying. Um, for something to change. But yeah. only until then, it's almost like, uh, uh, it's like a woman being harassed by somebody, right? Hmm. Stalked by a man. She keeps going in, keeps saying, this man's stalking me. But the police do nothing about it. It's until she disappears, dies, that she get, her family gets justice. Hmm. But it took a death for her to disappear, for them to do anything about it. So it's the world we live in, unfortunately. It takes something drastic for people to actually say, oh shit, uh, mm, we should do something about this. So, but it is what it is. It's how it works. It's the system. Totally sad to hear, you know, that type of, you know, movement that yeah. actually we're living in. And I would say, you know, hopefully, you know, by hearing yourself, hearing myself, something can change, something can be done. So mm -hmm. we definitely would say, you know, wishing every boxer, you know, to continue their careers in order to come, uh, keep it mm -hmm. like athletes 100% because at the end of the day, if you use something, you know, that is in your body that is not allowed, let's not forget that it's life. Mm -hmm. And God forbid somebody get killed mm -hmm. and then someone has to be done something and we don't need to wait for that moment. So mm -hmm. it's, it's very Completely. sad to hear. Completely. It's upsetting. Michelle, I really appreciate for your time. It's always a pleasure to see you. <laughs> Any message that you would like to send, you know, all the fight fans and everyone? No, I mean, you know, just keep watching my videos and I appreciate, you know, the supporters that I do have. And hopefully, you know, this year will continue to be another prosperous year. You know, every year it gets better, which I'm blessed by. And, uh, no, that's about it. <laughs> hey, uh, he always says, you know, I admire so much when the female is involved in boxing, whether it's a coach or a reporter like you, and we're definitely going to stay tuned. Guys, do not forget to subscribe on her channel. Keep an eye. Stay tuned on all the interviews that she's, you know, been doing, and I wish you nothing but the greatness. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate Thanks. you. You're welcome.